Hmm. You know, this might be a job for Super Porsche Man. Yeah, that's nice. That fits really well. Put my elbow through the freaking windshield or something. Oh yes, it's coming off. Oh, ho, ho, sweet. What's up, people? Let's get back to the Porsche 928 today. I know a lot of people have been asking that and I'd like to show you. So come on, check it out. What's going on with this car? You know, frankly, I would like to know the same myself. Now I say that a little tongue in cheek because it relates to the upholstery place and doing that, which we'll get into in a minute. But let me show you some of the stuff I do have for it right now, where I'm at, where we're going. So the car has sat here pretty much for the last while while I finished the 944 and got it driving. Of course, right now, uh, some of you noticed that it didn't start that morning. Reason being, I noticed that the starter was getting slower, even though the battery was fine, the charging system is great. So my thought is one of a few things. I feel like the starter was misaligned and it was the teeth are binding too tightly onto the flywheel and it's getting slow to start. Or it's possible my starter is just giving up the go because it's getting like, it just feels weak. So I got to work on the actual starter of the 944. But anyway, so this, it's been sitting here sadly. Uh, one thing I do need to do is get it up in the air on jack stands and send the wheels into powder coating. However, the powder coating place I used to use up in the Monroe, Michigan area just has vanished and I called and left a message and they never even responded. I've been crazy busy so I didn't get back. But I do have some nice things here that I bought. I uh, found a place on eBay. One, if you guys remember the steering wheel, which is a nice lightweight three-spoke one, feels good. I always thought this Porsche thing in the middle was kind of dorky looking, but it's a nice steering wheel and I kind of like it being stock. Anyway, it shrank a lot. Leather still feels good, but it, it shrank and busted all the stitching. However, there's a place that will make you a kit and the three spoke wheel off the 928 is apparently the easiest one to stitch if you're new. And the people who make it, by the way, I'm not sponsored by them, uh, but I'm just being nice. It's called uh, Custom Leather Restoration Steering Wheels, Alan Gunn. Um, and he restores uh, and customized steering wheels for a long time. Neat guy. Anyway, uh, check him out. He's on eBay. I don't know if you can read this or not, but there's a screenshot. Is it focusing or not? No? Well, then don't get so close. <laughs> I'll screenshot it. So anyway, um, even sends you little, nice little curly needles here. And then here's the proper thread for a steering wheel on a car. And that's pretty neat. So what do they give you? Well, you get a piece of leather. And it's already has all the holes pre-poked. <laughs> Poked is a technical term, okay? And the bottom is stitched together like that. So presumably, and uh, they got some good directions here. We'll do this in a later video. It's gonna take me a bunch of hours to do. So I just kind of wanted to give you guys a teaser right now that the 928. Let's see. So you gotta take off the old leather. You gotta clean off all the glue and sand it down, blah, blah, blah. But um, to do, once you soap the area, blah, 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 blah. But it sounds like maybe one of the best things to do is if you're sitting in the car on the seat, you can actually put the steering wheel back on and use that to hold it and turn it while you're stitching it. So that's, that's an option. Um, Cause even just holding it like this is, is a little tricky, frankly. So stitching goes down here. Trying to, let me tell you what, let me try to do it here. I feel like I'm gonna drop this and then it's gonna clearly scratch my car up on the way down. You guys ever done that with your cars? You're trying to show somebody something or help out a kid or something and you're doing something you wouldn't normally because you're not on your tool bunch and then you drop something and ruin everything. I feel like some of you out there have done something like that because I know I have. <laughs> it's like not really a hold my beer watch this moment, but it sort of is. Or like you got too much stuff in your hand when you're carrying it in and out of the car because you don't want to make two trips. <laughs> that's, that's definitely like my style. Yeah, that's nice. That fits really well. Look at that. All I did is slide it over and they got the exact dimension right. It's a really good feeling leather. And I think that'll, that'll be fun to do. And you stitch it and, and thread it and pull it all together. So we're going to get to that um, in an upcoming episode. But I wanted to show it to you guys. I am going to remove the leather and nicely put it back in the case. Because uh, I don't want it to get like stretched a little bit sitting on the steering wheel or if the steering wheel sits up against something get a funny like little uh crease or indentation in it all right so i'll come back to that and i'll bore you guys right now the next thing was the old shift boot is all worn out i think it was the same guy i got the shift boot from nice guy oh yeah it is the same guy <sighs> 
And he is one of the few, if not the only place, that makes re proper replacement shift knobs for these things. Of course, I could have done a custom one or something, but this is going to be a nice stock grand touring car with a really beautiful interior. So, and there's a lot to be said for the Porsche original shift knobs. They dampen a lot of vibration, so they get rid of all the transmission noise inside. And if you go put a custom one on, especially one that's wood, it can transmit a lot of that sound. But the, uh, the old um, inserts here that are a plastic material, I believe, are hard to come by or you get new ones of when they slide on. And that's like the only company that can do it. Uh, and the leather fits perfectly and it's really nice. I mean, my gosh, it feels, I'm presumably, this is like exactly what these things were when they were brand new. So I'm looking forward to putting that on and stretching it over the, uh, the framework there. And that's gonna be really, really nice. So the 928 in the interior and uh, my concerns and a lesson I have learned. So this, the front and rear seats and the door panels are at an upholstery place which will remain nameless right now, uh, that was recommended to me by a really good professional that was helping me with some other skilled service on some cars and things. And so I spoke to them on the phone. They were smart sounding. They were on it. They got back to me. I sent them pictures. Uh, I heard about other things they do. They should have the talent to do it. The trouble is I called them and then I spoke with the older guy and I mentioned to the person whom I work with, let's do a YouTube video. Like, you know, I like local businesses. I like to give you guys a shout out, show what's going on. People enjoy it. So I talked to the older guy and he's like, oh, I'm not going to be on the internet. I don't, I don't care. You can talk to him, see if he wants to be. I'm like, whoa. So the attitude there is changing a lot and I'm not asking anything from them. Like, <laughs> I don't know what you guys think this is. And then um, I finally talked to the younger person. I sent them pictures, nothing ever happened, and there were just no updates. And I don't even know if right now they have even touched the seats. I'm pretty sure they're all just sitting there with the Pasha fabric and they're just doing other things. And I know how it can be in a shop with other things going on, but I'm getting a little frustrated because um, I don't even know how long it's been. But my biggest concern is this. I can afford a little bit of time right now but if this gets to be March and I don't have seats, I'm gonna be pretty pissed off. But my biggest concern is that they do it and do a bad job. And a bad job with Pasha fabric could be just getting it off slightly or a couple of degrees. And the problem is with that checkerboard pattern, the human eye is awesome at picking up parallel lines and 90 degree angles. And if they get it wrong, you're gonna see it from a mile away and it's gonna look like garbage. Um, and then I'm gonna be like, what the heck did you do? So what's gonna be is a big giant argument. They're not gonna fix it. They're not gonna make it right. And they're gonna waste potentially $800 worth of fabric and months of my time. And then screw up what's left of the original material on the seats. Honestly, it scares the crap out of me right now. But they should be able to do it. And so this is the way I did it because you gotta give them a shot. Like, and they were recommended. I, I think they can do quality. I said to the younger guy when he listened to me, I said, you know, I talked to him about those things nicely. I said, look, honestly, I'm doing the restoration of this car and there's been over 100,000 views on this thing already. There's thousands of people watching this restoration and I don't want us both to look like idiots. Like that is the nicest way I can say that. Um, but mostly I really don't want my seats to get effed up and I can't afford to waste all that fabric. So I hope they don't screw it up. But you guys might have to learn from my mistakes, which is funny because I just put a video out on how to choose a good shop. But uh, I still have my fingers crossed that they're going to do a good job and get it done in a reasonable time frame. I don't mind if it takes a little bit longer, but it's got to be right with the pa Pasha fabric being the checkerboard. But let's look at the rest of this and what I'm going to do here next. I've got to pull out these panels here because as you can see, they shrink quite a lot here at the edge of the window where it gets hot and shrinks. So that's, that's all peeling apart. This material can potentially be cleaned up and re-glued there and used again and just sort of protected. Obviously it's got the perforation for the speakers. Uh, and then taking these out and doing that is my opportunity to replace the speakers back in here because presumably these are no good anymore. The, uh, the carpet here in the middle that's faded can potentially be re-dyed, which is a fancy term for basically fancy spray paint. Uh, which is true. Don't shoot me. It's funny when all these places are like, oh, we re the seats. I'm like, yeah, you basically painted them with fancy paint that wears well, which sucks because then it doesn't breathe for the leather and all. But it's true. Like, I, you know, it's, it's all the snake oil tricks that the used car people do. It's fancy spray paint. Get over yourself. 
So, but let's look in this, the rest of it. The rest of it's quite nice. It really just needs to be protected. Uh, there's speakers in here that likely will need to be replaced if you want to listen to some tunes. But the dashboard is, of course, the worst. If you want to take a look in there, I'll go to the other side. Ooh, that won't open up. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, that's annoying. What? Did you lock yourself out? Uh, apparently. So I could go get the key, or I could just get in through the trunk. <laughs> Okay, here we are. Hooray. <laughs> it's always a shame about these dashboards. I remember my dad when we test drove a 928 so many years ago when I was in high school, how cool I thought the car was and that he should totally buy it. But my dad wasn't that cool. He was like, oh, the dashboard's cracked. Uh. I'm like, well, why don't you fix it? <laughs> so anyway, it's gonna be a little bit of work. Fortunately, the binnacle, the gauge cluster is not cracked. So I'll, this'll have to come out and then all this stuff will have to come out. It'll take forever. Uh, I have to get it out. But I am a little concerned about doing this because it's not that it just cracks, but it also warps. So you can't really just cover it up because then you have bumps. So don't break that off, idiot. Um, wow, and that is cracked all the way bloody through. Look at that. Wow. What's underneath there? Metal? Yeah, it's metal underneath. That's fascinating. Hmm. You know, this might be a job for Super Porsche Man. Um, I'm thinking this dash, when I get it out, I need to send it to a, a, a place that specializes in Porsche fabric restoration. It'll cost a little bit more, but you really want it to be right, because I just go giving this to an upholstery place that's smart. Even if they do a good job with it, if they don't have all this other stuff to match up to, the chances of it matching to these other things well and looking good starts going down pretty fast. So I need to look into some options. I could always cheap out for the middle time being if I'm going to keep the car for a while, if I want to do it at another time um, and get the cheapo plastic cover just so I don't have to stare at the cracks, which is stupid. Um, but... It's not the worst thing in the world. Now, I have heard that when they recover these with leather and it gets French stitching here, that you have to get the later Porsche 928 vent grills, which are plastic from a new old stock type place, um, because I guess the later 928s were covered in leather, I think. I'm not sure, but they had vent grills. So that's kind of the thing there. The radio doesn't work very well, so that's something I have to go over. Um, Everything else works decently well. Of course, here's the shift boot that's total garbage. And um, But let's try this for fun. So I'll peel off the old leather. Look at this. This seems to pop off nicely. That's good. Yay, something is happening positive. Don't mess it up, Casey. All right, so just slide this out of there. Try not to ruin all the foam. All right, so here goes that. Okay, let's grab the shift boot. Okay. I wonder if that will need to be glued or it'll just nicely go in place. All right, so I'm gonna orient it with the seam. I don't, can you see that okay? The seam here? So orient the seam to go in the front, in the middle. Slide it in there. I don't know if this is going to be easier. It's going to be a total pain in the butt. Looks like it wants to be a total pain in the butt. Okay, just stretch that. Oh, this might go really nicely. This isn't a pain in the butt. Wow, that company did a great job. This is way better than the F-Boy MR2. <laughs> no offense to the MR2. Or my $20 <laughs> suede shift boot from wherever on eBay. Of course, I did find this on eBay, too, of these nice craftsmen that remake these Porsche shift boots, which is cool. People are like, Casey, you sound like a Porsche snob. Oh, calm down. I just want to put the stock thing on. I don't want to take the time to modify it. Plus, it's pretty nice. Get over yourself. I'm not being a snob. Sometimes snobs have good taste. They're just misguided jack wagons. Hey, look at that. I did it. I feel accomplished about myself and my life. Now, the question is, how do you take this off? <laughs> Does it just come off, or do you gotta like pull a clip or something? Hmm. Seems like it's on there really funky. Let's find out. 
Okay. Hmm. I was wondering if there was a clip or something in this. Or do you just yank? Ooh, you might just yank. Or maybe you have to put some like pry bars up in there or something. I don't want it to just like let loose and I put my elbow through the freaking windshield or something. Oh yes, it's coming off. Oh, sweet. Yes. Yes, this is very difficult. Only special Stuttgart train mechanics could possibly do this. All right, well that's, you know, like on and stuff. Oh, 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 it's nice. Is it just snap in place? Oh, wait, hold on. Maybe, maybe. Oh, you know, that's a thing. Okay. So that's, that's basically done. That's so cool. Okay. It's a little sloppy. That's, that's way too much play. So I'll figure it out. There's probably, I don't know, something worn out down there. I know one of you guys will tell me it's either a bushing or some piece of metal like on a 944 that wears and we'll get to it. But that's pretty much that. Let's go, uh, let's go look under the hood real quick before we go and plan that out together. Although now I can't get out. Oh, that's how you unlock it. It's got a knob. Oh, that's clever. <clears throat> oh, as a special teaser for you German car lovers, I am a lunatic and made a deal this evening to buy a funky German car that is even rarer than this, and I think you guys will really like. So stay tuned. It's gonna be a few weeks. All right, so come on over. Let's take a look inside. So when it's time to start working on this, there was no ridiculous leaks or anything going on. And allegedly the US eight valve 928s are non-interference engines. So if the timing belt were to break, it wouldn't be a problem, but you never want to bank on that. And I'm not even sure if it was all of them, but I have heard it. Now I did notice that on this, the belts like the fan belt and presumably power steering and whatnot, these belts are all loose down here. All the V belts like really loose. So who knows how well the timing belts are done. So we're gonna do all the belts, okay? And then the other issue I've noticed with the car, it idles quite a bit too high. So there's a good chance that somewhere in this Bosch K-Jetronic system is a vacuum leak. Uh, Bosch K-Jetronic, basically everything works properly through vacuum. So we're gonna to have to see and troubleshoot and find the vacuum leaks and what's going on. Also, why is this red wire not connected? And uh, do those basic things. Beyond that, obviously do a fluid change. We're gonna bleed all the brakes. We're gonna change the engine oil and the transax oil and go from there. And at that point, we if it's idling happy and running happily, you got fresh fluid, you got new belts, and um, an interior, it's time to start driving it around, enjoy it. Um, and uh, see if the water residue that was creating the milky froth up in the oil fill is indeed just condensation from short trips like some people mentioned it could be, or if it could be a blown head gasket or something. I'm certainly hoping it's um, condensation. But anyway, guys, that's where the Porsche 928's at. I am looking forward to getting it done and on the road, but I'm really waiting on that upholster that I really, really, really hope doesn't screw up my seats. What are you gonna do? I know what I'm gonna do. Really, uh, anyway, I don't know. I just, let's just hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> I really hope that doesn't happen. So, in the meantime, thank you for watching. This wasn't the most exciting video today on the 928, but I love this car. I love the Shark. I think it's great, a great bargain. And I'm really glad that I have the opportunity to put it together and uh, be a part of the non Porsche snob community with it. Yeah, yeah, I know. We're, we'll let the jokes go away. It's a good car. I'm really enjoying the 944 too. So naturally, I hope you guys will share this, like, comment, and of course, subscribe and see what other fun builds we have coming right up. See you guys next time.